Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new. I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you had a great week too. Happy Friday. As you guys can probably tell from the thumbnail, um, I am doing something very different than I have done on my channel before. I am building in Mount Komorebi. This is not a neighborhood that I build in very often. Um, I used to build in it a little bit, you know, when the f pack first came out. I've always loved Snowy Escape. I've always thought it was a really good pack. I know that might be mixed opinions. That might not be everybody's opinion. But I really enjoyed Snowy Escape when it came out. I really love the Japanese theme. I love the world. I love the snow sports. And it was something that was really different. I mean, we haven't seen anything like this in any of the other previous Sims packs. At least I don't think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. They might have had snowboarding and skiing in Sims 3, but I don't remember it. And I know for a fact they did not have it in The Sims 2. So. I really enjoyed Mount Komorebi and Snowy Escape when it first released, but I played it so much when it first released that I grew bored of it. <laughs> um, and then I just totally stopped playing in Mount Komorebi for years. I have not, it's been years since I've played in Mount Komorebi. I think it, the pack's been out for how long now? Let me, let me check. I think it's been like 2021 or 2022, right? Okay, so I just looked it up and it actually came out in 2020. So yeah, that explains it. It's been a while since I have built in Mount Komorebi. And so I just, I don't know, I got a wild hair and I really wanted to build in Mount Komorebi. I was trying to think of something different to build, something different than the typical suburban house that I always seem to build. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, I just... I thought of Mount Komorebi and I was like, let's let's do it. Let's build a Japanese style house. And I tried to keep it as authentic as possible. Um, I've never traveled to Japan and I've I looked at inspiration photos. So it may not be the most uh, authentic or traditional style Japanese house, but I really tried guys. I really tried my hardest and Despite if it's authentic or not, it turned out really good. It might not look like much right now, but be patient. It will get better with more stuff that I add. <laughs> um, I really am really happy with the outcome of the house. And also, I probably should have mentioned this in the very beginning of my video, but this is using only base game and snowy escape so this is also the very first pack restricted build, uh, build that I've done on my channel other than the newly released expansion pack um, I usually do only base game or I will use every single pack that I feel necessary in the build but this is the first time that I've actually went out of my way other than the new pack that I've went out of my way to do a pack restricted build. So this is just base game and snowy escape. So if you have those two packs, you will be able to completely download this house. And something else interesting of this house. So I did not end up adding a pool in the house, but I did add a customized tree house in the back. So stay tuned to see me kind of go back and forth and designing that tree house. It was interesting. It was not the easiest thing, but it turned out good in the end. And also something that I did, so I've never done this, but I think it turned out so good. So I ended up using the platforms and I placed it on the bottom of the roof. So my, the reason why I did that was because I wanted to color the ceiling on the bottom of it. I wanted to color it black so it wasn't just bright white. I think it looks better when you color it, um, unless it's like a typical suburban build. Then it it's, makes sense to have a white ceiling. But for something like this, I figured it would make more sense to have like a black under, uh, black under of the roof. <laughs> and so the only way I could think of doing it was adding the platforms. And when I did that, I realized how good it made the actual roof look. Like it made the roof look thicker on the bottom and more 
traditional. I feel like it, it made it look really a lot like a Japanese style like roof. And so I was really happy when I figured that out. <laughs> this is not something that I've seen from someone else. I mean, I'm sure someone else have, has done it already. I doubt it's that original, but I've never seen anyone do a roof like this. So I thought it turned out really good and made an extra piece of detail that was really necessary. I didn't think it was necessary before I added it, but looking back now, it definitely was. And I also went back and forth on how I wanted to design the landscaping of the house and how I wanted to design the front, uh, the front yard, the backyard, the whole nine yards. I had a little bit of a difficult time thinking of what to do. I definitely wanted to use a lot of these bushes that I ended up using. Um, and so I didn't think I was going to ever get there, but in the end, I really was happy with the result and I think it looks really good. And I ended up putting two cars out in the driveway as well. And this area over here, I almost put as a garage, but then I really wanted to use the windows. It's like a really big square window and then I used the the windows that you can't see through like it looks like screens almost and I put them on both sides of the window and it added like a piece of detail that I really enjoyed and then I also end up pulling out some of those shutters and I put them around some of the windows which was also new for me I have not used shutters in Mount Como Rebbe yet and so that was interesting to do on the windows up in the front of the house and some on the side too but mainly in the front of the house and I it added some extra detail that really was needed <laughs> um, and this is me trying to figure out how in the heck I'm going to do the treehouse and so you guys are going to see me pan in and out of the inside of the treehouse and that is because the tree goes away if you look too closely at it and so I have to use like tab and go in the first person point of view and actually look on the inside to see where the tree is on the inside and the outside of the tree house I tried to also keep as a traditional Japanese style and so I ended up using the exact same you know techniques that I used on the actual house that I used on the tree house as well so I did like the platform on the top under the roof and um, it turned out to be a pretty interesting tree house. I really enjoyed the way that this tree house looks and the inside turned out pretty cute too and if you don't have any children in this house then what I would do is redesign the inside of the tree house and make it completely kind of like a teenager hangout area. I think that would be like super fun and maybe as the children grow up you could change it into like a little teen hangout and yeah I kind of thought of doing the teen hangout as I was building but we have some children in this house and tree houses typically are for children and so I ended up just making it like a little hangout for kids but a hangout for teens would be super fun too. As far as the number of sims for this house I, I don't know what it is with me and three generational houses but at first I thought this could be a three generation house. But then the more that I did the actual floor plan of the house, I quickly realized there is not enough bedrooms for three generations to live here. You, I think I ended up putting an office in one of the rooms so you could renovate that into a bedroom. But other than that, um, yeah, there's definitely two parents. And I think I did a teen's room, a child's room, and an infant's room. I, guys, I don't know what is up with me and always doing a teen, child, and infant. I, there's just something about those three age groups. I really enjoy doing the rooms for them. And so the last few houses that I've done that I can think of, I've done a lot of just the teen, child, and infant's room. So I'm going to make an effort going forward to doing more of a combination of children's rooms so that either be like toddlers in there somewhere um, a teen and a child only or two children or two toddlers whatever it may be maybe a teen and a toddler if they have like their children really far apart in age but 
I am definitely going to make an effort into making it a little bit more unique, but um, now I am back in the front. I am just trying to figure out how I want to design this front yard. So I ended up doing, it pretty much stays how it is. So I put a fence on the side of the house since I figured out, you know, the end of the lot is right up against that like street. And so I thought it would be fun to do like a little, a little fence uh, or a gate, I should say over there. And then a sidewalk leading to the actual road. So your Sims, if they're going on a bike or if they're walking, um, obviously if there's cars, you couldn't drive out of that area, but they do have a driveway. But that's just an extra, you could go out of the back door and exit the house as well. I just thought it made it look really nice. And now I am trying to figure out how I am going to get a sidewalk to the side of the house. So I ended up just doing like the driveway I made gravel and then I made the sidewalks leading on both sides of the driveway I made it like the gravel with concrete sort of thing like it looks like paved stones with gravel around it and I thought it turned out really cute and then I finally figured out how to put the bushes everywhere and at first I was like is this too much is this just is it too much but I don't think it is guys correct me if I'm wrong but I think it's the perfect amount <laughs> it's not too much it's perfect and then I also ended up putting um, at first I did the gravel but then I changed it to concrete all around the house that is the house that was here before the house that I'm working on now the house that actually came with the game which I think one of the EA game changers did um, they had concrete all around the house and I kind of enjoyed it and so I ended up doing that exact same thing and doing it all around my house as well. It kind of fits with how the house is on the street. Like all the houses around it, they have a lot of concrete and driveway and sidewalk and not a lot of yard and like green. And the only green that's there is kind of cut out and so I kind of wanted to keep it the same way for my house too and it turned out really good I think it turned out really pretty and the backyard I kept a not a lot of grass so maybe I shouldn't say a lot of grass but there's a lot of landscaping everything that's under the tree house I put a lot of landscaping you guys might say it's too much but I think it's just enough and then I also put a koi pond in the backyard and then just like a little area that they have a picnic table and so it, it's a really fun backyard there's no pool but honestly this type of house I feel like wouldn't really have a pool um, at least like not in not in my opinion I don't think a, a pool looks really good with this style of house at least not how I would be able to, to design it. Um, it there's a tree house and just this style of house I thought a koi pond would make a lot more sense than a swimming pool and it turned out a lot cuter too and I also put like, um, I cut out a little area and I put a tree in the front yard and I put their garbage cans in the front yard. And there's two there. I kind of thought one was recycled and one was actual trash. And now I am just trying to make sure the lights on the outside of the house at night light up the property enough. Um, there's not a whole bunch of light on this property. I couldn't figure out a way to make the lighting look good both at night and during the day. And so I ended up just putting light where absolutely necessary. And I also pulled out these like stone, uh, little stone things that have like the candles on the inside. The, the stone statues, I guess. I put them around some parts of the front yard. I probably should have put it in the back too, but I, I didn't think of it, but I put it in the front and it kind of lights up the driveway just enough so that when your sim pulls up after a long day at work as a salary person, <laughs> um, they are able to find their driveway easy and it doesn't have to be like guess a guessing game every single night. And so I am on to the floor plan now. So guys, the floor plan of this house gave me a hard time. I could not figure out exactly how I wanted to do it. 
I want to say a traditional style of Japanese house typically has a platform in the front, but I want to say that they have a platform stepping down and then they step up into their house. But this one, obviously, since it's so high on a platform to begin with, I ended up putting the platform up and making them step down into the house. Which I did not love at first, but by the end of this house, um, when I'm completely done uh, furnishing the inside of it, I think it turned out really good. And I said in my previous video that I am not very fond of doing furnishing for houses, but I had a lot of fun furnishing this house. Um, just something different than the monotony of suburban houses. It was a nice change. It was so much fun doing this house and using only the snowy escape and base game and I had a lot of fun with it. And I also tried to stay true with the traditional um, like bathroom structure of these Japanese houses. So they have their toilets separated from their bathrooms. And so I did that for every single bathroom in this house other than the downstairs bathroom. There wasn't enough room to make the sink and toilet separate. Um, so I ended up just putting the sink and the toilet in the same bathroom, but there is no bathtub in there. So I figured maybe that's okay. Um, but the bathrooms upstairs, they both have the toilet separate from the sink and the to or they have their toilets separate from both the sink and their bathtub slash shower. So the upstairs bathrooms are very traditional. But on the outside of this house, I almost put a balcony on the second story, but I could not figure out for the life of me how to make it look good. And so I just did away with that idea and I just put the roofing back <laughs> how it should have been to begin with. And then I put a window and I called it a day after that. I did not try to put a balcony anymore on this house. It just was not going how I wanted it to do. Uh, the only balcony we have in this house is the balcony on the tree house. That's all we need too. So um, at least the kids have a balcony. And so this is the floor plan upstairs. So I have the whole right side of the upstairs is pretty much the master bedroom, like master bedroom area. So the master bedroom and then like a big bathroom and the toilet is off in its own little room other than the rest of the bathroom and it turned out really good. I'm really excited to get there and show you guys. And then I did a main bathroom upstairs where like the kids can share and that has a separated toilet also. And I also made like it kind of come out. It's poking out a little bit upstairs. So it's an interesting floor plan. It's definitely not a boring house. I really enjoyed this house. And looking back as I was building it, I really would like to play in this house. So if I do play anytime soon, I might play in Mount Coma Rebbe. I really loved it when it first came out and had so much fun. And so I think it'd be fun to go back and play it again. And then I did two other bedrooms upstairs too. And this is the living room area with those big giant windows and this is the kitchen. So it's very, very dark wood in this house, guys. There's not a lot of different colors other than the dark wood and some red accents here and there. But honestly, I really enjoy it. I think it looks really, really pretty and um, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Um, and then there's some green accents, of course, as well with like the plants that I put everywhere. And I also put a traditional, uh, the seating table, this, the table that's on the floor and then they sit, they sit on the floor and then I put the hot pot on there as well. And I had to have that in the build. There was no doubts about it. And I also was able to put like an actual dining room in this build as well. I don't know if that's very traditional to have both the dining table that's on the floor and a regular dining table, but there is like an extra room in this house I did not know what to do with. And so I just had to do an extra dining room, <laughs> but that could just be for like decoration. They don't actually have to use it. I figured 
they mostly use the family that lives in this house mostly uses the table in the kitchen right here that they have the hot pot on and they sit on the floor and I love using that table as well it's so much fun seeing them sit on the floor and use the hot pot and talk to each other it, it works really good and these counters have the open cabinets on the bottom and I have a hard time every time I use these counters I have a hard time filling them up and so I was actually really surprised that I was able to fill up these counters at least the counters under the windows the counters with the stools in front of them they're not filled up but you don't have to look at those uh, let's just pretend that they're filled up I thought it looked better without a bunch of stuff in it anyways and then the kitchen has all their like plates and stuff like that and it looks better in the kitchen for it to be filled up and then out where the uh, dining room is it just looks cleaner for it not to have a bunch of just junk piled in the open cabinets and then I also pulled out this light and I put that over the table and I absolutely love this like tea cabinet there I think it is so pretty and I've wanted to use it for such a long time now um, but there's just no other houses other than Japanese houses that you can like really get any use out of with that teapot. It wouldn't really make much sense in a suburban house. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't have it in, in a suburban house. And that doesn't mean that I will never put it in a suburban house. But really it looks best in a traditional Japanese style house in Mount Como Um And here's that half bathroom that I was talking about. It has the toilet and the sink together and I know that's not traditional um, but that's just all I could fit in this house on the bottom story and I needed to use that for something <laughs> that little space down there and I needed to use it for something obviously I didn't want to just leave it blank and there's nothing that really fit there other than a bathroom so it ended up just being a bathroom with the sink and toilet together it is what it is but the ones upstairs they are separate like a traditional Japanese bathroom would be and this living room turned out super cute so it's very very simple obviously as you guys can tell <laughs> um, but I ended up putting like the three-seater sofas on both sides over the window and then I put this TV on the very far wall the blank wall and then I just put a plan and a little piece of wall decor next to the TV and very simple very very simple but cute nonetheless I absolutely just adore this house I think it turned out so good and so this is the additional room that I was talking about that I did not know what else to do with I feel like it made more sense to do a regular seated dining table other than just another like living room seating area with that didn't have a TV it was literally just for your sims to just sit and do nothing really and so it made so much more sense to me to do like a dining area and I also was able to use that other like I don't know what china cabinet uh, sort of thing there in the corner I'm not sure what you really call that um, it didn't have the colors that I wanted I wanted it to be a dark wood with a red but it had blue on it unfortunately but I mean it is what it is it didn't stop me from using it and it still matches in this house nonetheless I mean it doesn't have to have the red I just love the red accent with the dark wood it looks so good but um, yeah anyways I ended up putting the china cabinet in there and then the dining table the rug and I put one of those I think they're orchids right the orchids the red orchid on the table and this area directly when you first walk in I tumbled some ideas around I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do I ended up changing the bookcase from that area over into the hallway the hallway needed something and that front area it was too much with the bookcase and so I ended up doing away with the bookcase and I just put like a hall table there and I put rock climbing gear on top of that I figured the parents loved to rock climb and then I put like the books on top of the hall table and then 
a plant I put a chair here and that's pretty much it I mean that's the front area it's nothing spectacular but it's something it's cute and then these blank walls was getting me I didn't like the blank walls and so I wanted to put something I ended up putting a shoe rack there we do have uh, that sign in the house that says no shoes cannot remember exactly where I put that at but I put it somewhere in the house and so your sims will walk in with no shoes and so I figured it made sense to have like a shoe rack there in the front and then I put that cute little chubby cat uh, banner above it and on the other side I just put like a picture and just to fill up the area so it wasn't so blank and the hallway was nothing special downstairs i just put a rug and then the bookcase and then i put a fish tank on the bookcase and that was pretty much it and then i made use of the traditional like japanese style doors it looks like french doors but it's the japanese style of french doors and pretty much what i used on the bed the parents bedroom there I made use downstairs as well. Going into the kitchen, they have that sliding door. And going into the living room, they have a sliding door as well. And I love those doors. It just makes the inside of the house look a lot more like decorated and pretty. And I really enjoy it. And this is the office downstairs. So you could do away with this office completely, even though I don't think there's another computer in this house at all. <laughs> Um, you could do away with the office and you could make this a grandparents room or an extra just spare bedroom or an extra child's bedroom. You could do whatever you wanted in this bedroom. I just made it into an office. I figured it would make sense to have all of the bedrooms upstairs and then downstairs they have their office. And I wish that the Sims team would make an L-shaped table. I do my own L-shaped tables with two of the regular standard like dining table looking computer desks together making it L-shaped um, but it's not ideal you can see the crack there obviously I wish the Sims team would make a real L-shaped table because it just makes a lot of offices look more filled up and decorated and it looks better I love L-shaped desks and now we are upstairs in the parents bedroom so not too special of the parents bedroom something that is interesting is the way that i do the bathroom so right here is the toilet room where like it's off on its own little area and then the bathroom i'll go back to the bathroom here in a little bit but i end up making the shower tub room separate from even the sink so it's all like its own little room it's it turns out pretty interesting and now I am doing an infant's room so there are this is a three bedroom house and then the fourth bedroom is the office so this is the infant's room nothing special and then oh yeah actually I changed that from the infant's room to the other room that's a little bit smaller so I gave the child the bigger room I just thought that made more sense. The firstborn should always have the bigger room. I mean, that's just, it makes the most sense to me. Um, and so there's nothing special with this infant's room, but it's a little bit different than I usually do. I usually do like a pink or a blue, maybe a green, but there's a lot of just neutral colors in this room. So it's perfect for either a boy or a girl with lots of earthy, beigey colors. Um, it turned out really pretty cute in the end and then I also put the other room is a child's room and it's Yamachan themed or is it Yamachan or Yamachan? It might be Yamachan. It's Yamachan themed and I think Yamachan is so cute. So honestly since this is a Yamachan bedroom this is very gender neutral too so you could have a little boy or a little girl in this room and I also put, so I had a hard time um, arranging this bedroom of how I wanted it to be. I wanted to put a TV in here. I don't know why I just felt the need to do that, but I did. And so I ended up putting that snowboard uh, desk um, in front of, almost over the bed. And then I put the TV on top of that. Of course, I used the penguin TV. I just have to. Um, it's necessary in a child's bedroom to use that penguin TV. If you don't, then you're doing it wrong. 
And you know, it would have been so cute if they added a Yamachan TV. I just thought of that for some reason. And that would have been perfect in this bedroom and super cute. But um, obviously they didn't. Um, they need to add more like character TVs because I feel like that's something that's super duper cute. I don't think that's anything that people do anymore. But I know back when I was a kid, um, like TVs made like different characterized TVs was super popular. I have never had one, but I knew people who did have like TVs. It was like a SpongeBob TV or that's really the only one I remember. <laughs> I don't know if it's that, it was that popular, but I do remember like seeing several um, children's TVs that I, they had like different designs on them and they were with different characters and stuff. And so I wish the Sims team would do some more other than like just a penguin the penguin's cute but I get tired of using the penguin and so yeah in that children's bedroom it it's pretty gender neutral um, and then I also put the snow like the ski um, wall shelves with the different like winter gear I thought that was really cute and I figured the kid that is in that room really enjoys snowboarding particularly and they like skiing as well. Um, this whole household is a very active household. They love doing different activities in Mount Komorubi whether it be rock climbing or snowboarding or skiing. They love doing all of the different activities in Mount Komorubi. And we are pretty much done with the inside of the build. Now I am just working on the parents, uh, the other part of the parents' bathroom. So this room is the shower room and then I have it off of the room where just the sink is. And then the toilet is in its own room. So it's very unique. It's not a bathroom I've done before. And the shower, I ended up putting a wall there and then I used the like the screen window and I put that on the wall and then I deleted the wall so that is in theory the shower like the wall of the shower and then I put the shower in there and then of course I put the little shelves that have the shampoo and stuff on there and I pulled out these like stools because I remember hearing back when this pack first came out I guess it's really um a lot of Japanese people or it's traditional to have like a stool next to at least the shower at the onsen but I think the bathrooms too I'm not 100% sure of the bathrooms but I thought it was a cute little extra touch and so that is pretty much it with the inside of the main house looking back now I realized I forgot to add decorations in the hallway but honestly, it's such a small hallway, it's kind of not needed. And so if that bothers you, then obviously you can totally go and add decorations in that hallway. But it really is kind of not needed. This whole house is so decorated that a little bit of wall, it's not going to hurt anybody. <laughs> and so now we are outside and I am finishing up the backyard and I had a little bit of a difficult time figuring out exactly how I wanted to decorate the backyard and what to add in the backyard and what to add under this treehouse and something that I like to do is add a lot of landscaping under treehouses a lot of like overgrown looking landscaping they obviously don't do a lot of yard work in their backyard at least not under the treehouse and I also put a koi pond here, which is what I'm working on now, and then I put a bunch of landscaping around the koi pond, and there's a little bit of an area in the front of the koi pond that does not have landscaping, so if you have a toddler that lives in this house, or you just want one of your sims to wade or play in the water or look for frogs or anything like that then your sim is totally able to. I don't have the fishing sign on that little pond. Because it's such a small pond, I didn't think it made sense to add a fishing sign, but you totally could if you wanted your sim to fish there, then you totally could add a fishing sign so that your sims can. And so I am, I just realized that there is the spandrel, and so I wanted to make sure that the house would look better with a spandrel on the outside, and it did not. It 
didn't look good at all with the spandrel. It was a little bit too large of a spandrel for as little of an area that I had it, and so it didn't really look right. So I just didn't use the spandrel anywhere on this build. And so I, to make it a koi ponds, I put those lily pads from Snowy Escape that have the koi in there. And so right now you might not see the koi but when you actually play, if you download this house and you play in it, then as you're playing the game, you'll see the koi swimming in there. Like, it's kind of, it's animated. It's, it was a really cute feature that they added in Snowy Escape that I thought was so cute. And so I used to use the koi pond, um, like the lily pads with the koi under it, all the time. But I haven't done it in quite a while. Um, so I was, I was excited to finally use it again for this build. And so I put some rocks around the koi ponds and just left out that little area. I smoothed it out a little bit. It was a little bit rough looking. <laughs> so I smoothed it out and I, here in a minute, you'll see that I add a lot of gravel in the backyard, but I end up doing away with that idea. And I put less gravel and a little bit more grass. It just looked a little bit better. And I'm just adding some terrain paint around. And I thought, you know, it'd be interesting to add some gravel around each of the pavement. So it's like they got the dirt under the bushes, but there's also gravel under the bushes. So it looks like the gravel kind of blends in with the actual like sidewalk that's there. And I thought it was pretty cute. And I also put gravel underneath the house as well. I kind of thought the house was completely built on gravel and this little part of the house of the backyard I I did not know what to do with this little area back here um, so I ended up just doing away with the gravel and making grass and there's no plants or anything it's just like a little open area and then I made like a pathway from the back porch to the gate and so it fills it up at the end and I also did not know what to do with that little fountain I felt like the koi pond needed something else and so I tried, I messed around with the little fountain, I put it in different areas, and I finally decided to just put it in the area that's directly over the koi fish, and it, it turned out cute, I thought it turned out cute. And so now I'm just trying to place the little, like, um, picnic table, <laughs> I had a brain fart, I could not remember what the heck that was called, but it's the picnic table, with the umbrella on top of it, I was trying to figure out where exactly to put that, and I just... It was not, it was giving me a hard time. Um, so I finally found a place for it in the end and that is right by the ponds. And then I removed the rest of the gravel and stuff and it, I, I, it's not the best guys, okay? It's not my best backyard, but I feel like it fits for the theme of the house. So yeah, here I am removing most of the gravel to leave a little bit of grass. I felt like a little bit of grass was definitely needed. And so it is looking better now that I took away most of the gravel, but it's still not my favorite backyard, but it is what it is. Um, it's something, I mean, it's not completely hideous. You have to give me a little bit of credit. <laughs> um, and so now we are just upstairs in the, not really upstairs, but in the tree house. And I am just adding different decorations, making it a nice little hangout for the kids. And by kids, I mean the child that lives here and all of their friends. Um, this is definitely the favorite hangout of the friend group. I mean, why wouldn't it be? This is like such a cool little tree house. And so I add these little bear couches that I wish I would have changed the swatches on. Looking back, I did not do that. Uh, so if you download this house and you don't want just those brown bears, then you could totally just change the swatch of the bears. And then I added a TV and I added a mental table. There is a, a doll house in here. There is that little like craft table. I think I put the craft table in there. But regardless, it has everything your child needs to have a good time with their friends. So with all of that being said, guys, we are nearing the end now. I hope you enjoyed this build. Make sure to leave a like if you did. So I know to keep building Japanese houses just like this one. And subscribe if you have not already. I hope you all have an amazing day or night wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.